What's going on YouTube? This is Marcus back for another video. I'm here to talk about Love and Hip Hop Atlanta season six episode, I think it was 14. So now I missed like the first five minutes, so I don't really know much of what happened between, you know, the first five minutes, but I where I where I um I can't even get my words like where I started watching it, it was when Mimi was telling the other girls that, you know, I got to get up out of here and go back home because, you know, I don't found out that C B didn't have Eva around Jocelyn. So we get to a scene where Rod basically meets up with Logan because Rod is like, girl, you know, you've been all over Jasmine's social media. You've been stalking her like what's going on, like, you know what it is. And so this is where um, Logan was like, girl, well, I think that's my daddy. He was throwing out all this stuff like, OK, you know, I've been to the Bughead apartment, you know, the baby's name's Cannon. You know, that's also my father's name, which I mean, that could have also I mean, on one hand, I see how. You know, you might look at it and say, well, wow, she named him the same name after his daddy. But at the same time, that could have just been a coincidence or maybe she just liked the name Cannon. Um, but Rod was basically like, girl, that's not enough information. You know, his timeline of when he last slept with Jasmine, this is where Rod was kind of like, OK, I kind of really don't believe you. because, But I know he did say that they slept together either in August or September of 2015 and she had the baby in July. So... So we just gonna say August, September, October, November, December, January, February. Wait, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June. So yeah, that would have been she would been had been ten or eleven. Yeah. So that means if, if they slept together in August or September, that means she was about ten or eleven months pregnant by the time she had a baby. Like, girl, get your story together. Um. But I honestly feel like, and I didn't think about it until I can't think of who. I think it was Color Me Pink. She said, was saying that, you know, Keisha, I'm sorry, Jasmine and Logan look like they can be brother and sister. And I was sitting there like, girl, I wouldn't be surprised if Mona paid, paid Jasmine's brother to come on here and pretend like he was the baby's father. But anyway, so Mimi comes over to Stevie house and she pissed off like, girl, I could have sworn I no, I could have sworn I told you not to have Jocelyn around my daughter. You know, she was basically, Eva basically had called her kind of like, you know how when you be, when you out of town and your child is missing, they call you to see what's going on and you know, Eva basically tells Jocelyn that she saw Bonnie and Jocelyn. I'm sorry, Eva tells Mimi that she saw Bonnie and Jocelyn. And so Mimi was like, girl, what, what you talking about? You seen Jocelyn. So Stevie J tries to say, well, you know, the girls took, might have took Eva to Jocelyn's house to see Bonnie. And you, I was just like, girl, now you know daggone well, you asked, you asked uh, Jocelyn to come move in with you. So, I mean, not only that, but like I said, when he, you know, spends time with Bonnie Bella, you know, she drops Bonnie Bella off and not only that, but she comes in and sits down and they all, you know, so just like, girl, why you can't just be up front and say, listen, yeah, I mean, listen, Jocelyn is going to be here. Um, and so Eva was, I mean, Mimi was like, girl, you know, I'm about to, I done went to the court and got me a protective order against Jocelyn. I'm, you know, I'm not playing no game, but you, I told you I didn't want that chick around my daughter. So we get a scene where it's with Carly and Jessica. They were sitting down talking and catching up. You know, uh, Jessica was asking Carly, like, you know, is the relationship with you and Caesar real or, you know, is this just something you're doing to get back at job? And so Carly Rip was like, no, nah, girl, this is the real deal. You know, I haven't even, you know, we do because, of course, you know, Caesar lives in New York. And so Don was like, girl, how do you handle a long distance relationship? She was like, we do a lot of FaceTime, a lot of phone sex, which is weird since, you know, she hadn't gave, ain't gave up the cookie yet. But, you know, it works. Um, so th whatever. So we get a scene with Stevie and Jocelyn. Jocelyn comes up to pick up Bonnie Bella. And so uh, Jocelyn was basically saying that, you know, I thought about what you said and we need to get back together, whatever. I'm going to move in here. Um, pretty much what she told her was that in order for her to stay in Atlanta, she wants to be the only person on Danger Zone. Now, this threw Stevie in a loop because, you know, he signed Estelita. Is it Estelita or Escalita? But anyway, he signed home, girl to his uh, label and you know there's a contract there so he can't just up and say you know because that ain't gonna hold up in court when the judge asked Stevie well why you drop her from the label you know because me and my ex-wife trying to work things out and she want to be the only Latina on the label like girl that ain't gonna fly in court and that's what Stevie J was kept trying to explain to her like girl it's you know lawyers gonna have to get involved there's a lot of contractual stuff going on I can't just drop her like that but uh and I'm sitting there like girl because J uh, Jocelyn was like you know the only person I make good music with is Stevie. And I'm sitting there like, girl, what music you making? 
I ain't heard, you know, in the song that you put out, ain't ain't hitting on nothing. I'm just like, girl, gone. You better, you'll be better off trying to secure that spot on the reel. But anyway, and so Jocelyn pulls out a box with rings in it. She gives him a ring and she puts her ring on and we're just like, girl, we're going to have to get remarried if you think I'm going to move back in here. And so he was like, girl, slow your roll because there's some stuff you got to work on. You know, you're going to have to apologize to my daughter. She was like, girl, what am I going to have to apologize for? And he was like, for the stuff that you said. And she was like, you know, I don't have a problem with that. So that was cool. So we get a scene with Mimi and Estelita. You know, Estelita basically tells Mimi how she not feeling Carly because she felt like Carly was being shady. Um, and so we, Mimi basically replays the story of with Jocelyn and why she left the Jamaica trip early. Um, and so at this particular point, Estelita is starting to have second thoughts. Like, girl, he's a little bit too messy. He's on a little bit too much. Um, and so she basically tell Mimi, like, girl, Stevie J said he's a whole new person. You know, he's not going to mix business with pleasure. Mimi was like, girl, well, the next time you sit down with this new Stevie, I want to meet him. Because the Stevie that I know, he has a tendency of sleeping with his artist. That's why him and Jocelyn are in a situation that they're in. So Carly and Caesar, Caesar coming in from New York or wherever he came, was from, wherever he was at, Carly got on this. Uh, I was just like, girl, okay. If you want to get you a fake butt, that's fine. But at least get make it look like it's real. Like, you can look at Carly and tell her it's fake. But anyway, so she cooking breakfast. Caesar come up in the house. And she was like, hey, babe, how you? He was like, what did it do, girl? She was like, girl, I done made you some breakfast. He was like, what for? She was like, because you done came home. So, you know, Carly Red was like, well, what you want to eat first? Because I want to feed it to you. He was like, slow your roll. We got something to discuss. Why? I'm looking on Instagram or so whatever he saw. And I see you in a romantic a vacation spot with your ex she was like girl listen you know it was supposed to have been a girl's trip jock was supposed to have you know he wasn't supposed to be there none of, none of the men were supposed to be there they just happened to show up but i can assure you that you know nothing happened between us all he did was apologize he was like well girl if that's your ex and you supposedly moved on why are you so worried about an apology and that's my thing if whether the man apologized or not if you saying that you moved on and you over him what why does it matter if he apologized to you or not and so she was like well girl listen you know, I needed an apology for me because it would help me get some closure and to be able to move on and not feel like every man is the same, you know, and now I got you. Um, so whatever. He was just like, girl, you should have told me that he was going to be at your because it, he kind of felt some kind of way because he felt like the fact that she brought him to the grand opening and Jock was there that it was more like a aha, you know, I'm over you versus like, girl, we an official couple. So. Rod and Jasmine. Jasmine come walking up in the house. Rod is pissed off like, girl, I don't really believe what Logan is saying, but he got me feeling some kind of way. So he confronts Jasmine. Jasmine was basically, basically like, girl, I ain't slept with him since 2014. Um, but then she lied because she, in the beginning she was like, girl, we ain't slept together since 2014. He said, well, Logan was saying it's 2015. He was, she was like, girl, listen, we dated in high school. He left to go to the military. I moved to Atlanta. That was it. He was like, girl, but wait a minute. Didn't you just tell me that um, you slept together in 2014? He was like, girl, you're lying and the truth ain't in you. And you, <laughs> that's a, that's a, that's an old school church term right there. You a liar and the truth ain't in you. Or I've heard like my pastor say, you're lying, your feet sinking, you don't love the love. <laughs> And so she was like, girl, well, what do I have to do to prove to you that I'm not lying? And he was like, you know, take this test. Now, mind you, Logan, when around the time that Logan was saying that him and um, old girl had slept together, he was like, well, maybe she said she had gotten an abortion, but I'm thinking maybe she didn't get one. But in the confessional, Rod confirmed that she did have an abortion, but he thought that it was maybe had been his baby and she got an abortion. So... And then as far as the whole thing with Cannon, she was basically like, girl, me and Kirk sat down and discussed baby names and he picked out the name Cannon, not me. So we get to Jessica's listening party. So, you know, she was up there rapping, doing whatever she do. Um, everybody, well, Mimi was there, Carly was there, and Sierra was there. So they get on Sierra. Sierra was basically talking about how, you know... Her and Shooter are not together, but I think they still live in the same house because she was like, we still trying to keep up appearances for um, the children. But she was like, girl, I'm not wearing my ring. So then we get into um, Mimi talking about her protective order. Basically, she was saying that 
you know, when she went down there, they that she would have to bring Eva into court in order to get the protective order, which means that Eva would be exposed to everything that has gone on. And, you know, it's, I'm, it's for, from what I understand, Eva doesn't really know anything as far as, you know, Jocelyn saying that, you know, uh, Stephen J allegedly molested her and his other children. So, whatever. So, as Alita shows up, Carly apologizes and was just like, girl, I wasn't trying to be shady or nothing like that. I'm sorry, you know. Um, and so, as Alita, instead of just saying, you know, I'm, you know, everything is cool, I apologize, she goes into saying, you know, well, why does it matter if he's signing another artist and wop, 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 and this and that and the other. So Carly throws a drink at her and we're just like, girl, because I don't like you. So after they get into it, next thing I know, her and Sierra was about to get into it because Sierra was saying that Esalita's drink spilled on her or she threw the drink on her. I'm saying that like, no, what I think happened was you when Carly threw the, threw the, threw the stuff at Escalita, you got hit with something. I don't think Esalita's drink threw her drink at you. I mean, she don't even know you. They don't have no beef at you. So why would she have to throw her drink on you? I'm just like, girl, Sierra, you just trying to get you some extra camera time because your storyline is done and over and you are relevant on this show. But anyway, so they go outside. Mimi, I mean, uh, Melissa comes out first. Esalita was like, girl, what's going on? What's the tea? So Mimi was just like, Esalita, you know, I don't really understand what that was about. And so Melissa Melissa was trying to help them to understand Carly's viewpoint because even you know when her and Jocelyn sat down, Jocelyn specifically told Carly, I don't I don't want you coming to me telling me nothing about, about my baby daddy. So Carly's whole thing is but my thing is this I ain't <laughs> You're going to be exposed to people that's involved with Stevie J or people that's going to be around Stevie J. You, the problem is not the fact that you don't want to be in people's business. Your problem is you don't know how to keep your mouth shut. You don't, you, you, you got to go and run and tell this person and that person. Keep your mouth closed and everything will be fine. But you so talking about, oh, Jocelyn, you know, she had, because she had like, you know, that she obligated to run and tell Jocelyn stuff, girl, keep your mouth but well, then I don't know though because y'all know Jocelyn have crazy. So on one point, Jocelyn is like, girl, don't come to me with no mess about my baby daddy. But then on the other hand, if Jocelyn, if something comes up and Jocelyn finds out that Carly Red knew about it, then she gonna be mad that Carly didn't say nothing. So I mean, it's a lose lose situation with that. But anyway, the end of the episode, Carly, I'm sorry, Stevie Shade Savannah. I hate the way they pronounce her name. But anyway, Stevie Shade Savannah and Jocelyn sit down. Now before they get there. Stevie J basically tells them that Jocelyn proposed to him. That Savannah was like, "Girl, if you get back with Jocelyn, it's gonna be done and over. I'm, you, you're not even gonna be my daddy. I'm gonna go find somebody else." So Jocelyn come in, and I'm confused because obviously the two girls was mad at her, especially Savannah. So she come in all chippy, like, "Girl, what it is, what it do, what's up, y'all, whatever." So and they get right into it, girl. We want an apology. I do commend Jocelyn for apologizing. What I don't commend her for is trying to put the blame on somebody else. You know, because, you know, she goes into the whole thing of Stevie made me get an abortion back in the day. And she goes to bust out in tears. Savannah was like, girl, if your tears, I don't care about that right now. She go and it was just like, girl, Stevie J was coming. In. Now, mind you, they was both being petty going back, going back and forth on social media. But at the same time... There's a, there has to be a limit, especially, you know, not only did you lie on this man, but the lie that you told could have got him arrested. He could have lost custody or visitation rights with his children. You could, I mean, his whatever business endeavors he got, he could have lost all of that. He could have been fired off of love and hip hop, had this stuff turned, you know, just like, girl, you was doing the absolute most. I don't, because Stevie didn't say nothing about you that was that bad to where you had felt like you had to go and say this man was molesting his children. And so... I was here for the girls, like, girl, that ain't, you know, F your tears. Now, mind you, Savannah was more upset than Sade was. Sade was just sitting there keeping, trying to be chill. So, <laughs> Ooh, I was I was really hoping that Jocelyn and the girl was going to, because Jocelyn was just like, girl, you know you can't beat me, right? Savannah got up just like, girl, listen, I will, I will do you right here, right now. So she get pissed off and she walk out and leave. And so Jocelyn was just like, so y'all just going to let her stand up on me like that? I'm sitting there like, girl... You was the one running your mouth trying to pop off because nine times out of ten, if you would have got into it with Savannah, Sade would have jumped in and they would have probably would have molly walked your hind part. 
And see, and that's why, to, to me, Jocelyn's apology wasn't sincere. Because if you was truly sincere about your apology, then regardless of how much she was popping off or what she was saying, you, I mean, you know, it was just like, I don't know, her talking about something, well, you know you can't beat me. It, to me, it kind of voided out her apology. But anyway, that was the end of the episode. Now, I was just sitting here thinking about the episode next week. Now, because Rashida kept saying that, you know, that she was trying to protect her son. And when I was looking at the son, I was saying, like, girl, he's at the age where he should be able to understand that mama and daddy is separated, might be getting a divorce because the daddy is, is, is on some other mess. But then at the same time, we all know this storyline is fake anyway. Because ain't no way, I don't care how long you've been married. Ain't no way in the world a man can be cheating on a woman constantly. He's been cheating on her for the past three, four seasons. And now he might might not might not have a baby. But in present time, y'all together and all lovey dovey and hook girl. Get out of my face with that. But anyway, thank you all for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, be sure to follow me on my social media, which will be in the description box down below. If you missed any of my previous Love and Hip Hop Atlanta recaps, the link to that playlist will be in the description box down below. And I will talk to y'all later. Peace.